Hello and welcome to Access Sportsnet Lakers, driven by your Southern California Honda dealers, Chris McGee, big game James Worthy, Allie Clifton. Brett's going to join us in a little bit. We got Trudell handling all the post game locker room sound. Big game James Alley, very short handed Laker team, goes into Brooklyn. <clears throat> they play an all around great game and they take it to the red hot Nets. I mean, that's a, that's a 25 point beatdown right there. Yeah, and, and I got to tell you, it doesn't surprise me. Uh, you know, when LeBron went down, uh, this team was, was limited in, in a lot of ways, but their defense continued to hold up. Even the games that they were losing, they were still playing hard. The energy was there, the defense. And I think once they started to understand that, look, we're going to be without some scores, let's start attacking, let's start getting some offense going ourselves, Schroeder, Montrez, pick and roll. They've been playing really good basketball. So I'm not surprised that the defense tonight was sticky. It was irritating. And uh, they were just coming in waves on the defensive end. 12 steals. Yeah. 12 steals, just 14 turnovers compared to the 22 the other night, which was a big mm -hmm. storyline. 30 assists. Guys, it was short-lived because we lost Dennis Schroeder to the ejection, but you tip your hat to him as a floor yep. general, as a leader, someone who put it on himself after that loss in Miami. 19 at the half. To bounce back mm -hmm. and respond the way he did, and really just the whole team. Uh, as we've talked about, the defense has always been stellar. It has always been there, the effort, the energy. But to come into Brooklyn... The attention to detail, the focus on both ends of the floor, the composure. There was a moment where they went down four. They responded with a 9-0 run going into the half. As you mentioned, a total team, team win, 48 minutes. Allie, 19 of 34 for 56% from three as well. That ties the season high and made threes. It kind of feels good to say it. That yeah, way, it does. Right? Feels real good. And you look at the Brooklyn Nets side, just five threes for them as, as a whole. In that first matchup, we talked about Joe Harris. The Nets are 13 and three when he mm -hmm. hits at least six or more. Brooklyn as a team, five threes. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Shaman only three <laughs> points, Cabarro only five points. He said we have to hold all their role players in check because those are the scary guys. You know what Kyrie's going to do. You know what KD is going to do. Of course, when Harden plays as well. Uh, guys, I want to talk about the new additions. Andre Drummond, hit it, Manny. <laughs> Rage. Oh, man, he was ready right there. They were he getting was. their rings with the Dodgers. He's with us today. Yeah, He's so ready right there. <laughs> B. Moore had that planned, our producer. We were all ready to go on that one. Andre Drummond, guys, he is a problem. The Nets did not have an answer for him. 20 points, 8 of 15, big game, 11 rebounds. People talk about his free throw shooting, 4 of 6. I just love the way he dominated the paint. They had no answer. You know, in, in the 80s, you guys who can Google and go back, rest in peace, Moses Malone mm -hmm. was that type of player. You did not want to be around him in the post because he was bringing the pain. He was going to bring it to you. He's physical. Uh, he, he's, he's not afraid of the contact. He can make shots. He can put it on the floor and get by you really uh, a, a quicker big than, than, than he plays. And, uh, yeah, he's going to be a problem. Rebounding the basketball at will. We said before he came in here, he was a, he was a 20 20 guy a night, and I think he can possess that. He only has nine toenails. <laughs> <laughs> Even better. Who cares? The nickname is Nail. Who cares? Uh, you know, I just can't, I can't stop thinking about what Jared Dudley told us yeah. the other day on the Lake Show podcast, that you do not realize how good Andre Drummond can be, will be, until Anthony Davis and LeBron James return. Mm -hmm. And today we saw, and it's been in such a quick amount of time, you know, that first night against Milwaukee Bucks, obviously it was short-lived because of the toenail, yeah. but we saw him reading, not reading and reacting as much, but thinking. Mm -hmm. Tonight, he got the ball, he demanded the ball, he went to the board, yeah. crashed the glass. You know, we didn't get to see him much in the Bucks game, right? Ripped off that toenail, it wasn't the same in the second quarter, we didn't see him in the second half. So really, the Miami game was his first full game in almost two months, James. And it was funny, on last night's show with Brian Kamenetsky and Mike Trudell, we were talking about what did that game in Miami show you? Yeah. From Andre Drummond. And for me, it was like, oh, when he's with LeBron and AD, he's a problem. Well, he was yeah. a problem tonight, too. Even without those guys, he's a problem. Look, right now, without AD and LeBron, I believe that the offense is running through Drummond. You know, yeah. you Schroeder, said that tonight. Schroeder does yeah. his thing. He, he gets by you. And, and we have other pick and rolls. But I think for the threat uh, of the offense, the defense, they have to be worried about him. The more and more he gets to that bucket, uh, he's a shot maker, like I said, Geeter. He gets in there. He's not afraid to take it to you. And I think he does 
make the right decision when he has to pass out of the post. He's not afraid to look around and find that open guy. So, yeah, he's going to be a problem. Do you want to know how to make Laker fans love you? <laughs> and make your threes? Come into the game as a new <laughs> Laker and rain threes down, Ben Packlemore. I mean, he, he finished with 17, but he erupted in that fourth quarter. Allie, he had, what, 14 in the fourth, four or five from three, but what was it in the first three minutes? 11 straight. Were we yelling in the newsroom? Point. I don't, what, were you, what were you yelling? I was yelling. Oh, yeah, you they were yelling. They had to tell me to actually quiet down. But I wanted this one. I actually want you to take this because Rob Ori had a thought about whether or not he would be a good addition. This is before the Lakers even picked him up. Yeah. And, you know, it's about whether or not guys can be successful without the volume of shots. Mm -hmm. Can you still make an impact if those shots aren't coming at you at a high clip? And you said... If you can't, you shouldn't be in the NBA. Yeah, yeah. It, it, you know what? When you're known as a specialist mm -hmm. and, and they bring you in for a particular, you know, uh, uh, reason, you know, uh, you, you have to be able to knock them down when you get the shots. And so, yeah, I mean, if you need volume shots, we'll give them to you, but you got to knock them down. I got to tell you guys, he, he was suspended last game for walking that five feet off the scores table. I'm switching gears now. I'm going to THT. Oh. Oh, I was like, <laughs> I was like wait, no, I'm down with that for a minute. I just got to go to THT because I just saw, when you look at his line, 14 points, 11 assists, three rebounds, two of five from three. THT played a great game. And with Dennis going out, THT becomes the primary guy, Allie. He delivered that's on the big your, stage in the national game. That's where your focus automatically turned to. Who is your playmaker now with Dennis Schroeder not in the basketball game? And THT, he still makes the young player mistakes, but you can live with them when the energy, the effort, the intention is there. And for him, he continues to learn. It's one of the big tasks that the coaching staff has placed on him to make great decisions. Ten assists, big mm -hmm. game. That's great decision making. Yeah, young 20-year-old probably saying, man, LeBron out, AD out. I'm getting some more volume. Now Schroeder got kicked out of the game. I'm running the show. You know, he did. He did. They talked about, you know, whether he was worthy of being traded or not with, yeah. with Kyle Lauer. I heard Mark Jackson and Van Gundy talking about that. I think he's a keeper. I mean, Lauer would make an you know, immediate impact, but this kid here is special. 20. And he can make an impact, and he's making an impact right now as well so. also so great it was a great scene man he he was walking off uh the court coming out of uh coming out of the game and there's ad and lebron talking to him i mean the value in that is mm -hmm. you can't really measure it i believe he's ready uh dennis shooter may have a little fire under his teammates they outscored brooklyn 60 39 after the double ejections wow with one another in the regular season so obviously not being able to play a ton of minutes together, 186 minutes only amounts to about four games total that they've been on a court together, but they're still managing to be one game ahead of the 76ers in the East for that top seed. Are there any concerns that kind of stand out for you? If we just take it to the court, we know that the big three is going to exist at some point in time. What stands out? To you? I actually have a few concerns. And when you put together a super team like the Nets are doing, it's not necessarily a foregone conclusion that they're going to actually win the Eastern Conference. I actually have a few things that I'm concerned about. One, injuries, yeah. in particular hamstrings. You never know when that can happen again. Mm -hmm. The second thing is when their big three has been playing, it seems like they're taking turns. They're less synchronized. So therefore, you got to get more reps in in order to get used to one another. They also have a first-year coach. And then they just added um, Blake Griffin and LaMarcus Aldridge. These guys have been played together. And lastly, James Harden sacrifices a lot when all three of them are playing. He only taking 11 shots per game, Volge. This is a guy that's led the league in scoring. Should he be the third option or the second option? I mean, they still got to get that sorted out. Yeah, Jalen, I, mean, I think he's going to be the second option, and I think that's I think for the Nets, when they get into the playoffs, and you saw this Miami's first year together, uh, Boston's first, first year of the Big Three, they went to seven games with Atlanta in that first round series. Those teams played a lot together in uh, the regular season. But if Kyrie Irving is going to be that third option, someone is always third. It is never a trio. It is never co-star. Someone's going to be third in this. How do they handle that when they get into late-game situations? Who's taking that big shot when there's blame to be had? 
there's a lot of stuff you're going to go through in the playoffs. And I think for this Nets team, as Jalen said, working through that's going to be a real challenge. What James Harden has done for this team, he has elevated the role players. They have loved playing with James Harden, the way he has shared the ball. Joe Harris especially, he has been a godsend for this locker room, uh, not just because of the injuries they've had, uh, but this team is really his team now in terms of how he choreographs it with the ball, sharing it on and, and what he's meant to them in the locker room. Mm -hmm. We know that Joe Harris can shoot it, and obviously right now the Nets, they're second in the NBA um, in three-point three field goal efficiency. But, Woj, there's some news to be reported also throughout the league. So what is the latest? Yeah, uh, Alex Rodriguez and, and billionaire Mark Lohr, they're finalizing a deal to purchase the Minnesota Timberwolves Ooh. from Glenn Taylor. Uh, Taylor will continue to uh, control the team for another two years, 2023. Uh, Lohr and A-Rod will take control of the Timberwolves. I'm told the purchase price is around $1.5 billion. Mm, that's news. Temple I could have contributed a little bit. <laughs> How about your boy, A-Rod? Yeah, maybe next time. <laughs> the T-Wolves right now, they are last in the league. They have a new head coach and obviously um, looking to improve at the end of the season. Anthony Davis, he is not going to be in today, Woj, but let's get a projection for when he could return to the league. 25th? Well, Anthony Davis is going to be reevaluated, you know, that lower leg injury on Thursday. And, and I'm told that there's optimism from there either within the next few days or within a week that he'll be able to return. So you're looking perhaps 10 days to two weeks for Anthony Davis. Uh, he's been out of.